So I've decided to go ahead and replace the rubbing strake with stainless steel, stainless steel bar. Um, there's several reasons for doing this. One of which I wrote about uh, last year on the blog, but one of them is this problem here we've had where uh, when Tamino was stored in a garden for 25 years, rainwater was coming off here and rotted a big section of the rubbing strake here. We started doing a scarfing in a piece here of teak um, and it's just turned out to be difficult to get right and match up. Um, possible though. And then the more I thought about it and, and uh, the fact that it was quite easy to remove the rivets that are holding this on and, and with the interior stripped out I've now got access to the back of all these rivets. I thought why not go for the solution I originally wanted to do anyway which is to uh, uh, replace the entire strake and the reasons for place, replacing it with a metal strake is partly because of wanting to fit a Jordan series drogue. Now often uh, it seems like most people would fit the drogue by putting a chain plate somewhere here and attaching that and my thoughts my initial thoughts were well I could hide the chain plate behind the strake and I thought well well since the strake is kind of broken and I probably need a replacement um, why not replace the whole strake with a stainless steel strip um, so I have a stainless steel strake which will go right along the boat and essentially form a massive chain plate all the way along the boat and there's no way that's going to fall off uh, and calculating the, the loads on the the loads required for the series stroke means that you need to better hang the entire boat essentially for either of the quarter either the quarters so you're going to take a one ton load on each quarter so um why not belt and braces and put a uh, replace the whole strake with a stainless steel strip and it'll be bolted in right round. There are 50, uh, I think 44 bolts, with 44 of these rivets at the moment, which we'll replace with uh, bolts and attach all the way round. And um, that will form a very strong, that will also provide a lot of strength for other fixing. We've got a little bit of a problem because there's a double curve in the hull. So the straight curves vertically as well as horizontally and we're going to have to see if we can get this get the strip to conform to the side of the boat and that's going to be an interesting exercise but we think we can by bolting it on and tightening up these bolts we think it'll lie reasonably well against the side of the boat but anyway job number one is to uh, take all these out mess I'm dealing with. That one came out cleanly. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that can try that better. It's a rivet with a wire still in the middle. It's quite hard to deal with. Finally we're having to improvise each one. Most some of them have been alright, like, like this one for example, that's okay. It's come out cleanly. And what we found is we drill the top off with a five millimeter drill and then mostly we can push through with a center punch and push through onto the inside and they're not for the most part not covered up with any fiberglass on the inside they're just just sitting on the inside so it's not too bad that one you can see the rivets not pushed through yet it's still there uh, this one is the worst nightmare so far um, it's had the wire right through and the problem with this one is but on one of these with the wire through we've managed to get it from the other side but this one the other side is in the anchor locker it's very hard to get a tool in there so unfortunately it's a bit of a mess I'm still working on that try and drill that top off that rivet and push it through so yeah again the new bridge engineering never intended anyone to take any of this apart uh, but when it goes back together it will be fastened with 
something like these. These are six, six M6 uh, stainless steel, A4 stainless steel, and we'll have a penny washer on the back and a nylock on the back. I can have a have a look at the hull deck joint now. We've got the rubbing streak off, and you can see it's a bit rough in places. And just here, not there. No, that's all right. Where is it? A bit further along is there. This bit here. Oh no, that's interesting because actually inside I've got a small leak oh. at this point yeah. where the water comes in behind the, the shelves, yeah. where the shelf's glassed in it, the water appears underneath. So this well could well be the cause of that. Yeah. So this, this may be where the hull deck joint is leaking. Yeah. Uh, so that probably needs some fiberglass repair. I think so, yes. Well, the, fiber, the filler would do, you know, you could do the filler. Well, yeah, some kind of repair anyway. Mm, but repair. Yeah. So that's interesting. Why don't we expose that? Otherwise, there's a bit of, a, bit of an overhang here where the deck and the hull haven't quite yeah. matched. Oh, is that another rivet? There's a rivet there. There's a rivet there. There's a rivet there. Oh, I've got loads more. There's more up there. There's one, yeah. No, no, I just, I just been doing the getting the top off. Yeah. And the, the, the two... These two back here were, were mysteriously were six millimeter bolts, not rivets but not on the other side. On the other side, now I've got the distinct impression that this side was done by a different person. Because on this side, these plugs were much more thoroughly glued in and none of the rivets have broken. They're all the right way around without the wires pulled through. Although they're a bit vertically uneven. As you can see, some of them are a bit high and some are a bit low. It looks, we're hoping that this side will come through much more easily. But the port sides come off much more easily. The rivets are all consistent. We just drill the tops off and then we're able to peel off the rubbing streak. And here's, the, here's what we found underneath. Lots of crumbly old sealant. Lots of mud, funnily enough. It looks like mud. And here, it's all wet. And it's, yeah, this is like, pretty sure that's mud. I'm pretty sure that's just mud and dirt behind there, and it's wet as well. So it's not dry behind it. Look, look at that. Look. I think this has been obviously not. It's been penetrated by gunge and dirt, and it's retaining quite a lot of moisture as well. It's wet gunge, especially back here, soaking wet. It rained a few days ago. So. So this has been retaining moisture behind the rubbing streak and it'll eventually have started rotting it, I guess. I haven't had a close, had a close look at the back of the rubbing streak yet. Yeah, there we go. And this is the, what's left of the rivets after some drilling. And mostly we'll be able to knock those through into the inside of the boat without much difficulty. So something interesting, on this side you can see we've got consistently spaced rivets which are the hull deck joint rivets and then in between every so often we've got these studs which were the um, rivets for the rubbing snake but on the other side if we go around we've got another story to tell because what we've got is these holes which are left behind by the rubbing straight rivets that I've just removed the hull deck joint rivets and then more rivets if you look, you can see that all along, let's say look this way, we've got these extra rivets here that have had their tops sawn off. Now that's not our doing. Dad had a rub had a rub down on that one thinking it was a one he had to knock through, but it isn't. We've got lots of old rivets like this, which have been sawn off. And there are funny positions as well. They're like low down, like that one's low down. So we think maybe this wasn't the first rubbing strake that was attached to the boat. 
and there was one on here that was riveted on in the wrong position and then cut off again and the whole thing done twice and that's why there's crazy numbers of rivets on this side of the boat and the workmanship on this side is definitely lower than on the other side that side's much neater so there you go there's another one so uh, yeah discovering a history here